Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be a $50 deck tech. When I say $50, I mean that is an overall deck cost. Both shipping and commanders that are $10 or less are going to be included in that cost, but basic lands will not be. On this deck tech, I'm going to take you through its strategy, the tactics, and how this deck wins. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Today's episode comes to you courtesy of Stefan, a Golden Pig Tier patron who's been supporting this channel for over a year now. I truly couldn't do any of this without amazing patrons like Stefan. And for the personalized deck tech, Stefan chose Winota, joining her forces with a focus on attacking with non-human creatures and surprising opponents with powerful humans. Winota is a 4-4 human warrior that costs 2 red-white. She has whenever a non-human creature you control attacks, look at the top 6 cards of your library, you may put a human creature card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and attacking, it gains indestructible until end of turn, put the rest of the cards on the bottom of your library in a random order. So the basic concept for the deck is this, we're going to make a ton of non-human tokens, get Winota out, swing away with everything, and then get a lot of powerful humans off the top of our library into play for free. As always, I'm going to take you through 10 different tactics to show you how this deck works and how we're going to win with it. So let's start things off with tactic number one, join together. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bauble, which we can pay two to tap and sacrifice to get a basic land and play tapped. And then we've got three mana rocks that each can tap for our colorless with Prismatic Lens, Mindstone, and Guardian Idol. Prismatic Lens can help us filter our mana. Mindstone, we can pay one to tap and sacrifice to draw a card, and Guardian Idol can turn into a 2 2 Golem artifact creature until end of turn. Next up, there's Fear of the Suns, which comes into play tapped. It can tap for any color three times. And then we're running our two diamonds with Fire Diamond and Marble Diamond, both come into play tapped and tap for one of our two colors. Next up, there's Star Compass, which also comes into play tapped and can tap for either of our colors, depending on our land situation. And finally, we're also going to be running our Talisman and our Signet. But now let's talk about how to get some non-humans quickly onto the battlefield with tactic number two, Call to Arms. First up, we've got some ways to make some goblins with Dragon Fodder, Kranko's Command, and Hordling Outburst. Both Dragon Fodder and Kranko's Command are going to make two goblins, and Hordling Outburst makes three. And then there's Raise the Alarm, which makes two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens. And then Servo Exhibition and Sram's Expertise are both going to make Servos. Servo Expedition makes two, and Sram's Expertise makes three, and on top of that, we can cast a card with converted mana cost three or less from our hand without paying its mana cost. Next up, we've got some creatures that can help us out as well with Goblin Instigator, Mongwar Marshal, and Kranko Tinstring Kingpin. Goblin Instigator is a 1-1 one, one that makes a 1-1 one, one Goblin when it comes into play. Mogwar Marshal does the exact same thing, except it also has Echo for 1 in a red, and when it dies, we get another 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token. And then Kranko is a 1-2 goblin for 2 in a red, and whenever it attacks, we put a plus plus 1 counter on it, and then create a number of 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens equal to Kranko's power. But we can make even more goblins throughout the game with Goblin Assault. It's an enchantment for 2 in a red, and says at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token with haste, and goblin creatures attack each turn of fable. Another repeatable way to make tokens comes with Orketra's Monument. It's a legendary artifact that costs 3 and it says white creature spells you cast cost 1 less to cast, and whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token with Vigilance. And finally, there's Assemble of Legion, which is an enchantment that costs 3 and a red. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, put a muster counter on Assemble of Legion, they put a 1-1 one, one red and white soldier creature token with haste onto the battlefield for each muster counter on Assemble of Legion. The more that this stays in play, the more muster counters we get and the more soldiers we get too. Again, whenever we attack with a non-human, we get a human off the top. But let's go over some humans that can help us make non-humans as well with tactic number three, making friends. First up, there's Loyal Apprentice, which has Lieutenant. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control your commander, create a 1-1 Thopter artifact creature token with flying. That token gains haste until end of turn. So every single turn that this and our commander is going to be in play, we pump out a token that can get us more humans. And then whenever Sky Knight Vanguard attacks, we get a 1-1 White Soldier creature token that's tapped and attacking. And finally, there's Silverwing Squadron, which is a Star Star Flying Vigilance that has power and toughness each equal to the number of creatures we control. This can become a huge threat, and it also has whenever it attacks, create a number of 2-2 White Knight creature tokens with Vigilance equal to the number of opponents you have. But we're not quite done with our humans that make non-humans just yet. So let's go over some with some powerful ETBs in tactic number 4, Bring Some Friends. And the first card that we're going to go over is actually the golden pick of this deck, which is the number one card out of our 99. And the golden pick for this deck is Lena Selfless Champion. She's a 3-3 human knight that costs 4 white white. 
When she enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token for each non-token creature you control. And then by sacrificing her, creatures you control with power less than her power gain indestructible until end of turn. So this is a human that we get off the top of our library, and when it comes into play, we get an incredible amount of non-human tokens. On top of that, it acts as board white protection, which protects most of our creatures. So it's an extremely impactful card that can help us out in a lot of situations, and that's why it's the Golden Pig. Next up, there's P and Karenalar, which when it comes into play, we put two 1-1 one, one colors, thopter artifact creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. On top of that, we can pay 2 and a red to sacrifice an artifact to ping a creature or player for 2. And then Geisar Monk is a Star Star Vigilance Human Monk that's power and toughness for each equals to the number of creatures we control. On top of that, when it comes into play, we get 2 1 1 White Spirit creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. Next up, there's Captain the Watch, a 3 3 Human Soldier with Vigilance that gives other soldier creatures we control plus one plus one in Vigilance. And on top of that, when it comes into play, we get 3 1 1 White Soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. But a human that can make us even more tokens when it comes into play is Evangel of Heliod. When it comes into the battlefield, we get a number of 1-1 white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield equal to our devotion to white. But a card that can really help out with these ETBs and other things as well is Mirror March. It's an enchantment for 5 and a red and says whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, flip a coin until you lose a flip. For each flip you won, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Those tokens gain haste, exile them at the beginning of the next end step. With just a couple of flips going our way, we can get a ton of value out of this. Now this deck is based around combat, so what's better than one combat phase? Let's find out in tactic number 5, let's do that again. First up we've got Relentless Assault, which is a sorcerer that costs 2 red red and says untap all creatures that attack this turn. After this main phase there's additional combat phase, followed by additional main phase. And the Resurgence says creatures you control gain first strike and vigilance until end of turn. After this main phase there's additional combat phase, followed by additional main phase. Doubling up our combat is huge for this deck. These can provide us a ton of value by getting us more and more humans off the top of our library. And on top of that, they can easily help us finish off the game as well. But now let's go over some more of those powerful humans that we can get off the top of our library in tactic number 6, to be human. First up, there's Tajik Legion's Edge, a 3-2 human soldier with haste and mentor. By paying red-white, we can give it first strike until end of turn, and it's going to prevent all non-combat damage that we dealt to other creatures we control. Next up, there's Hakdos the Unscarred, a 6-1 human warrior that attacks each combat a fable. And when it comes into play, we choose 2, 3, or 4 at random, and it's got protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number. So Hakdos can be really hard to block and really hard to kill. And then Resolute Blademaster is a 2-2 human soldier ally and it's got rally, so when it comes into play or another ally comes into play under our control, creatures we control gain double strike until end of turn. This can be a fantastic human hit off the top to deal a lot of damage. Next up there's Avenging Hunt Bonder, which is a 3-3 human warrior with double strike, and when it attacks we put a double strike counter on another target attacking creature. And then there's Fireflux Squad, which is a 4-3 human soldier with haste, and when it attacks, we can exile another target attacking creature we control. If we do reveal cards from the top of our library to reveal a creature card, we put that card onto the battlefield tapped and attacking in the rest of the Barber Library in a random order. So this can basically replace one of our tokens with a much more powerful creature. And finally, when Flame Rush Rider attacks, we create a token copy of another target attacking creature that's tapped and attacking, we exile the token at end of combat. So again, this can be a fantastic way to abuse some of our creatures' ETBs. But protecting our board position is crucial for this deck, so let's go into tactic number 7, staying and leaving. First up there's Anax Hard in the Forge, which whenever it or another non-token creature we control dies, we create a 1-1 red satyr creature token with. This creature can't block, but if that creature had power 4 or greater, we get 2 of those tokens instead. Not being able to block isn't a big deal, because we just want to swing with those satyrs anyway. And then there's Gerard Weatherlight Hero, which when it dies, we exile it and return to the battlefield all artifact and creature cards in our graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. This is a fantastic piece of board white protection that can get us even more ETBs. Speaking of ETBs, Angel of Glory's Rise has a great one. Because when it comes into play, we exile all zombies and return all human creature cards from our graveyard to the battlefield. But next up we've got some ways to prevent our creatures from dying in the first place with Rootborn Defenses, Make a Stand, and Frontline Medic. Rootborn Defenses and Make a Stand both make our creatures indestructible and Rootborn Defenses also lets us populate and Make a Stand gives our creatures plus one plus zero until end of turn. And then Frontline Medic has Battalion, whenever it and at least two other creatures attack, creatures we control gain indestructible until end of turn, and we can sacrifice Frontline Medic to counter target spell with X in its mana cost unless its controller pays 3. But on top of protecting our own things, we have to deal with our opponent's things too, so let's move on to tactic number 8, Cleanup. First up there's Oblation, which is going to make the owner of target non-land permanent shuffle into the library, then draw 2 cards. This is actually a very flexible card that we can use on ourselves if we need to. And then Forsake the Worldly is going to exile target Artifact or Enchantment, and it's got Cycling for 2. Finally, there's Crush Contraband, which says choose one or both, Exile Target Artifact, Exile Target Enchantment. But how do we get to all these great cards? Let's move on to tactic number 9 to find out with I Can Dig It. First up, we've got Wild Gas, Tormenting Voice, and Thrill Possibility, which all essentially do the exact same thing. They're going to make us discard one card to draw two. And Thrill Possibility can even do it at instant speed. Next up, we've got Faithless Looting, which is going to make us draw two, then discard two, and it's got Flashback for two in red. And the Cathartic Reunion makes us discard two to draw three. Finally, there's Mentor the Meek, which can help us take advantage of all of our small creatures coming into play because it says whenever another creature with power 2 or less enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay 1 if you do draw a card. This is a fantastic way to help us draw a ton of cards throughout the game. 
And finally, we've got two cards that can cycle with a Chroma's Blessing and Pursue Glory. A Chroma's Blessing says choose a color. Creatures you control gain protection from the chosen color until end of turn. So this can help us protect our board or help get creatures through. And then Pursue Glory can give our attacking creatures plus two plus zero until end of turn. But now let's talk about some cards that can really help us finish off our opponents in tactic number 10, Win Oda. First up, there's Agra's Cost, which whenever he attacks, attacking red creatures get plus two plus zero, and attacking white creatures get plus zero plus two until end of turn. And then Adriana can pump all of our creatures even further. She's a 4-4 human knight with melee, and other creatures you control have melee. Melee means whenever this creature attacks, gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each opponent you attack with a creature this combat. Next up, there's Gold Knight Commander, which says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. And Valor and Akros is the exact same thing, but it's on an enchantment. Both these are fantastic and pair really well with those humans that come into play and make a ton of tokens to pump our army. And then Andric Master Tactician says whenever it and at least three other creatures attack, you can choose which creatures block this combat and how those creatures block. So this can just pretty much get our entire army through and help us pick off whatever small creatures that we want to. Up next, there's Warstorm Surge, which says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. With a number of creatures coming into play, this can help us deal a lot of damage throughout the game. And then Angress Marauders can make that damage hit even harder because it says if a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead. Getting this off the top can be game-ending in a lot of circumstances. And finally, there's Mob Rule, which says choose one, gain control of all creatures with power four or greater until end of turn, untap those creatures that gain haste until end of turn, or gain control of all creatures with power three or less until end of turn, untap those creatures that gain haste until end of turn. So this is kind of like a mini insurrection which can provide us a ton of value and can easily help us finish off our opponents. But now it's time to see how our deck stacks up to the competition when it comes to price. The average Minota EDH rack deck is going to set you back $321.24. Our deck is going to be much more affordable coming in at $49.96. And if you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, check out that link in the description. But with any kind of a budget deck, there's always ways that we can improve on it, so let's go over some reasonable upgrades. First up, let's add in Felwar Stone by taking out Star Compass. Next up, let's add in Swiftfoot Boots by taking out Akroma's Blessing. And then let's add in Boros Charm by taking out Make a Stand. Next up, let's add in Secure the Waste by taking out Sram's Expertise. And then let's upgrade this deck with Darien King of Keldor by taking out Agra's Cause. And finally, let's add in Cathar's Crusade by taking out Pursue Glory. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this deck deck are. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who helped make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tacks. There are even tiers for get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commanders quarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one.